for the best car, SUV, or truck, guess what? You're in luck. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay. Come in today. Doing business the old-fashioned way. Frontier, we got the right price. Frontier, we'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead country. Well, good news. I have the owner of that fine establishment, a better uh, known as Frontier Motors, here in the studio with me today. Ready, willing, and certainly more than able to take any phone inquiries from you. Let's say you wanted to get the price of a car or a truck or an SUV that you were thinking of buying or selling or trading in. Give us a call. Ivan Streckel standing by to give you that information. Give us a call at 478-3116. He will be with us for the remainder of this half hour. As I said, he has the information. He will share it with you. Good morning, sir. Hey, Don. Thanks so much for the introduction. And here we go one more time. The Frontier Motor Show is on 1370 AM radio. So you, uh, like Don said, if you are listening to this on the radio, you can join us, 478-3116. We're also videotaping this for our Blab TV customers. So if you're watching this on TV, it's a pre-recorded show. There is a phone number on the do- bottom of the screen, and that is the dealership's phone number, Frontier Motors, in case you have a question, just like you would if you're listening on the radio. And the questions that we answer here on the show is things like, what's a good car? What's a bad car? What does consumers reports say? What is our opinion on what's a good car or a bad car at Frontier Motors? We've been in business for 20 years, so... We were selling between 2,000 and 2,600 cars a year, so we get a lot of feedback from our customers. Uh, we also help people uh, with advice uh, as far as what their vehicle might be worth if you're thinking of buying a brand spanking new car, which last year, by the way, was a record new car year. If you don't know that, last year was the number one year, 2015. They sold over 17.5 million new cars. That's an all-time record. So as far as the car industry is concerned, at least the recession is over. I'm not saying that there's not people out there that are hurting and that there's job issues and things like that. But as far as new cars, uh, all time, uh, all time high. And the reason I'm excited about uh, them selling 17 and a half million cars is because of course, uh, we sell used cars for a living. So if, Half of those people are disposing of cars that still have a lot of life left in them. That's where we come in. We buy those cars for the lot of Frontier Motors. But getting back to advice, the other thing, obviously, if you're going to buy a brand new car, you'd want to know what to pay for it. So we help people with advice because we have the new car cost guides at Frontier Motors. And these cost guides are updated almost seven to eight times a year to let us know what the dealers pay for a particular car. When you look at consumers reports, um, in the back of consumer reports, they have a an order form where you can order a brand new invoice for a car uh, if you're looking at a car, and they say it saves you a bunch of money if you know what the dealer paid and what the invoice is. Well, they charge seventeen dollars for an invoice. We charge zero for an invoice, so we can tell you what to pay for that new car, or at least what we can do is tell you what the dealer paid, and you can take it from there. Obviously, if you know what the dealer paid. It makes it a lot easier for you to negotiate a deal where you won't have to spend hours and hours going back and forth, making ridiculous offers. One of the things that's very interesting in this new car cost guidebook is you'll be surprised that the markup on a new car is not as high as most people think. I remember when I got in the car business back in 1975, as far as sales are concerned, um, the markup on a car was 25%. I remember one of the first cars I sold was a $10,000 Impala. And the cost on that car was $7,500. It had a $2,500 markup. Well, right now, if you look at a Impala, that's $35,000. It has about a 9% markup. So the markup is still there. Let's just round it off at 10%. So it's got a $3,500 markup at 10%. So the markup was higher than before because the car is more expensive. But the percentage that the dealer makes is actually less. Less negotiating room. The other thing I can tell you also is wouldn't it be nice to have a second opinion on what your car is worth? Now, I know that you can get on the internet and you can Google car values. And when you do that, you're going to come up with an Edmonds book, a Kelly Blue book, and a consumer's version of the NADA. Those are the three books that you're going to find on the internet to help you kind of guide you well yourself through what the book values are. But let's talk reality. Don't forget the book's don't ask you a lot of questions that are very pertinent when a dealership does an appraisal on the car. One of the things that's very important is how does the car sell? And I'll give you a prime example right now. Let's use a Cadillac CTS. Cadillac CTS sales right now in the used car market are way down. So they're not bringing anywhere close to book value. 
So if you were looking at book value and it says the car is worth $35,000, but they're only bringing $25,000 at the auction, the book value is way too high. And that's where Frontier Motors comes in again to give you our opinion based on reality of what we can buy a car for as a dealership. What should that car sell for on a dealer's lot at a profit, especially if you're trying to sell it yourself? Now, the reason I'm bringing up the example of the CTS is because I have a customer I'm not a customer, but I have someone that is trying to sell their CTS by themselves and they put it on one of the websites and I saw the car on the website and they've got that car overpriced by about $5,000. Now they have it overpriced even over what I've got that same car for because I have the twin on a lot. So I'm able to guide that customer by telling them, Hey, I know you're trying to sell your car, put the most amount of money in your pocket. You don't want to take wholesale but you don't want to do the work yourself. A lot of people don't want customers or people that are looking at their car for sale coming over at seven o'clock at night. I don't know if you looked lately, but uh, I think the sun goes down around, is it seven? Yeah, it's sneaking down earlier and earlier. 6.53, I think Mm -hmm. that's what it is. It it used to be almost eight o'clock. Now it's just about seven o'clock. So if you've got your car on Craigslist, for example, and somebody says, I'll be over at 7.30, guess what? It's dark. And they want to test drive your car. I don't know. The first three pages of Craigslist is watch out for this scam. Watch out for that scam. They even tell you don't take cashier's checks. Now, how do you get paid for a car if you can't trust a cashier's check anymore? One of the car money gurus, not car, but money gurus that I saw heard on TV about two months ago was Clark Howard. Mm -hmm. And Clark said, Somebody called in about, a, he had a motorhome for sale, Don, and he said, right. I want to sell my motorhome. It's about $20,000. He says, well, how should I take payment? He says, well, don't take a cashier's check. And here, I've been taking cashier's checks, and I've been giving cashier's checks out, and Clark Howard says, don't take cashier's checks. He says, why not? He says, because there's scams going around with cashier's checks where people are getting a cashier's check, and then they're drawing the money out of their bank. Mm-hmm. The person that gets the cashier's check goes and deposits, and it bounces. That's not supposed to happen with a cashier's check. So Clark said that the best way to do a transaction is to either go with the cust- both people, put both parties together and go to the bank you do- they're doing business with and have the bank do it, or do a money transfer. I guess money transfers, when it's, once it's in your account, they can't reverse it. So just a little helpful hint. But come to Frontier Motors with that car. Don't have people come over the house, you know, and they're going to try to see if you'll work the work on the price. <laughs> you know how that goes. You're asking a ton of money for your car, and they're going to say, well, I'll give you $5,000 less, and now you're playing what a car dealer does. You don't want to do that. Second thing, they're going to want to know if you'll warranty the car. Third thing, they want to know if you'll take a trade-in. Fourth thing, I want to know is, how about a warranty? Will you give me a warranty on a car? You don't want to do any of that stuff. Why not just bring it to Frontier Motors, let us write you a check for it. We're going to be very fair with that figure, and we're going to show you how we came up with it. It's going to be more than wholesale, but less than retail. It'll be somewhere in the middle. And we're buying about 10 cars a week from private individuals that have gotten tired of having people come over to the house and make them either ridiculous offers or ask them to take notes on the car. I heard that someone came in the other day. Would you take notes? I said, well, what does that mean? They, that means they want me to finance it for them. And I'm not going to finance it for them. I need that money to go buy me a new car. They had a car that they were selling because they were having a baby and it, had, it was a little two-door job. They needed an SUV. The other thing we can help you with, folks, uh, obviously the most important thing I think we can help you with is not get ripped off from any dealer or any private individual. No matter where you buy the car, give us the information of the car you're looking at. Call Frontier Motors on the screen. And if you're listening to this on the radio right now, you don't have to call in unless you have a, a specific question. By the way, the phone number is 478-3116, 478-3116. This is 1370 Talk Radio. And if you want to join us, I can answer your question for you for the next 20 minutes. We've got about left. If you're watching this on TV, there's a phone number on the bottom. It's 436-8080, I believe it is. It might have a 800 number. Call that number and let the operators at Frontier Motors Get you to one of the managers. We've got five managers standing by. We always have, we, the reason we have five managers is because we want to make sure we're able to take care of you. Some dealerships have a buyer. You know, you see these dealerships that say, hey, we buy your car from you. We'll buy your car. Almost every dealership says that or they have a sign up. You go there and they say, hey, where's the guy that buys the cars? Well, he's at the auction. 
He's at the auction for four days a week, and he's off on Saturday, so he's there for one day a week because they're off on Sunday also. So there's nobody there to give you the figure. We make sure that we have somebody there that within 15 minutes we can give you a price on your car. The only time that would be an issue is if you had a lot of miles on it and I have to have it inspected by a mechanic before I buy it. But how easy is that? Now, the other thing we can do for you is if you're going to buy a car somewhere else, call in and give us the ID number of the car. That's the seven, uh, some people call it the VIN number, the ID number, the identification number, the serial number. It's on the lower left-hand corner of the window, and it's also on the door. And it's normally on your paperwork, and it's also on your insurance card, by the way. Call us in with the ID number of the car that you want us to appraise. And we can do a couple things for you. Well, the first thing we can do if you're buying a car somewhere is we can tell you what the history report says. Now, we use right now, we're using two history reports. We're using AutoCheck and we're using Carfax. Everybody probably knows what Carfax is because they do so much advertising. They're probably the number one advertiser and the number one uh, a, a provider of history reports in, in, the, in the nation. Number two is AutoCheck. The reason we use both is we want to make sure that the information is the same, that there's not a discrepancy. Now, remember, if they're 99% correct, then one out of 100 is not correct. So we use both of them to keep everything in double check just to make sure that the information is the same. And then when we plug that into the system, it also tells us what the average selling price is in our area on that particular car. And going back to book values, when we talked about the NEDA book, this, by the way, the book that I'm holding up right now is in kind of a yellowish orange book. It's called an NEDA. This is an official edition. You cannot get this on the internet. Now, why do we use a book that's different than the Kelly and the Edmonds and the NEDA? It's because our bankers, our credit unions, and our insurance companies in our area, almost all of them use this particular book. Now, that, again, doesn't mean that's what the car is worth. That gives you the book value. And don't call your banker and ask him what a car is worth. Call your banker and ask him what the book says. And that's what they will normally borrow. If you have good credit in retail, let's use the CTS. If retail in the CTS was $35,000, the banker might tell you that car is worth $35,000. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not worth $35,000. I can buy them at the auction for $25,000. And even if I want to mark it up $3,000, that would make it $28,000, wouldn't it? But your banker is going to tell you it's got a $35,000 book value because they're not in the market. They're into the book reading business. That's what they do. They don't ask you if it's been smoked in. They don't ask you the condition. They don't ask you how many accidents. Heck, they don't even ask you the color. And all of those things I just mentioned have a big thing to do with the final value of your car. And that's where we give you that free advice. We will spend minutes with you or hours if you want at Frontier Motors, we're open from 8.30 in the morning until 6 o'clock in the evening, 4 o'clock on Saturday, we're closed on Sunday and holidays. But what we do, half of our time is not spent selling cars. Half of our time is spent appraising cars for customers and giving advice. And our salespeople are geared to that because you know what happens? When we help you get a deal somewhere else, guess who you're going to recommend? It's usually the people that helped you get the deal, which in this case would be Frontier Motors. So our salespeople know that because they've been doing it for so long. They've got customers coming back and coming back and coming back to them because they know the way we do business at Frontier Motors is different. And what I mean by different is we talked about before as far as if you put a car on Craigslist, a customer comes out and they want to negotiate. I don't really like doing that. I would rather give you a fair price right off the bat. Now we might price the vehicle at what did I say? Book value. But the next question out of most people's mouth when they come in after the test drive is, can you do any better than what you're asking? Now, we already have two different prices. and One reason is because the internet makes us and keeps most dealerships honest because it's so competitive out there. And we have programs, like I've got a program right now that I have on my screen, on my screen called Price Driver. What Price Driver does is if you're looking at a 15 model CTS, Let's say I'm buying it from you. It tells me every 15 CTS for sale, and it defaults to 150-mile radius. Now, I'll normally program that out to 350 miles or 500 miles. Now, a 500-mile radius, remember, that's almost 1,000 miles if you're going east and west. We're in the middle. It gives me a lot of comps 
And the reason I want the comps is I want to find out what is everybody selling these cars for because I want to buy the car, be able to sell it for a profit, but be at the lower end of what everybody's asking. Or if I'm not at the lower end, have a car that's in better condition, a better color, with more equipment. Maybe less owners, maybe a one-owner car, maybe a clean history report. Do you think there would be a difference in the value of the car if the vehicle has been in three accidents versus one that has never been in an accident? I think so. That difference is called diminished value. Those cars that have been in three accidents will sell, but they need to sell for less money for, for me to entice someone to buy one. If you're trading a car in right now that's been in a major accident, you might be entitled to diminished value. I sound like an attorney right now. On this morning, I was watching Channel 3. Uh -huh. Every other commercial, I tell you, there's only two commercials on Channel 3 this morning. It was either a car commercial or it was an attorney commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only ones there were. Those two. I sound like an attorney. But I can help you get extra money, but I'm not going to take a third of it. <laughs> I'm going to do it for nothing. It makes a little bit of difference. And what I mean by that, folks, is if somebody hits you, and it's a major accident. You know the value of your car has now been compromised. Let's say you trade that car into me after it's been fixed. And I run the history report and it says major accident reported, airbags deployed, it had to be towed. Well, obviously, that's a little, that's a little hickey. That hurts. I'm not going to pay you full price on that car. I might diminish the value of that car three or four thousand dollars, depending on what kind of car that is. And you should be compensated for that by the other person's insurance company. It's called diminished value. And I think, as far as I know, we're the only ones that puts this in writing and signs it and puts and does it for nothing. So here you go, here's the value. You go back to your insurance company, tell them Funter Motors said that you're gonna get four thousand dollars extra. I mean, you're going to get a diminished value of $4,000, and they should write you a check for $4,000. Now, some of it's lower, and if it's an older car, don't come in with a 150,000-mile beater that's been in a fender bender and expect me to give you a diminished value. It's not going to happen. I don't really care on an older car like that. It's not going to ha make a hickey. But let's say you're driving a 2015 Corvette. Somebody rams you from behind, and you got $40,000 worth of damage, and they don't total it. You might have $10,000 worth of diminished value. And we'll put in writing. I don't think you'll get that from the other dealerships. The other thing we help you with, folks, also is we can do a consignment for you. If you've got a car and you don't really want to sell it, and let's say I offer you $10,000 and say, Ivan, that's a little lower than what I can go. I says, well, to me, that's all it's worth because i got to write the check for it. I'll give you a little bit more money to put the car on consignment as long as the car passes inspection. So I might go $11,000 on consignment. Let's say the car is supposed to sell for $12,000. I'm offering you $10,000. So I can make $2,000 on the car when I sell it. And you say, that's not enough. So I say, well, let's do a consignment and I'll give you 11. It's still only going to sell for 12. So I'm still going to make $1,000, which is better than nothing. And I do all the work for you. You drop the car off. We wash the car twice a week. We advertise it on up to 15 different websites. We take a trade in. We can get it financed. We can offer a warranty. Let's talk on about the warranties just for a second. If you go, and I, this is kind of interesting because I, I heard this from a local cleanup place, a detail shop, I guess they call them. It was a local place that does some of our cars. And it's really interesting, Ivan, when we bring, when you guys bring your cars up there, they all have window stickers in them. By law, a used car has to have a, they call it a Maroni or something like that, a window sticker. And you have to disclose uh, the warranty on the car. And all of our cars that have less than 150,000 miles come with a three-month warranty, even if they're out of factory warranty. Obviously, if it's a newer car, they're going to have factory warranty left, so it's immaterial because they're all going to be out of box remainder factory warranty. But what if the car, for example, has 75,000 miles on it? Let's say it's got 130,000 miles. Matter of fact, we have a Honda Element on the lot. It's an 07 Element. It has 127,000 miles on it. It's a nice car. It gets a 90-day, 3,000-mile drivetrain warranty at no charge. And they said that there was two major dealers that they also detail cars for, and their cars are marked as is. Every single one's marked as is. And I, I'm telling you, from doing this radio show a lot, that if a dealer does not have enough confidence in the product they're selling, especially a car, that they won't even give you at least a 30-day warranty, I would get the heck out of there. If a dealer won't give you a price in writing 
including all the fees. Now, when I say fees, I'm including all kinds of fees. Everybody knows what, how that is. Well, you know that if you ever stay in a motel room, tell me about fees. Ninety nine ninety five, and it's 150 bucks by the time you get the heck out of there. And talk about that. I rented a car in Milwaukee a couple months ago, Don. Uh-huh. The fees for a week were like $170. Wow. It was crazy. It was a Suburban, so it was like a $600 yeah, rental. This is above and beyond. Yeah, your, so your they rental. tell you at $600, you know, so I'm yeah. like, okay, I can. Uh, that's a lot, but I need yeah. a Suburban. I got a lot, a lot of things I got to carry. So I got me my Suburban, and uh, the fees were 150 bucks, and that's without buying the insurance. Mm-hmm. Because my credit card has insurance. At least yeah. they say they do. Unfortunately, I didn't smash it up. But we know good, about good. fees. We know about fees. So when we talk about fees, we're not just talking taxes. We're talking dock fee, setup fee, get ready fee, turbo tax, battery tax, tire tax, electronic titling fee. There's so much garbage that they put on these cars after the sale price. There's even one dealer that advertises the sale price. If you put $2,500 down, what the heck is that about? Why don't they just advertise it for like, $5,000 with $15,000 down. That's ridiculous. We don't do that at Frontier Motors. We give you a price in writing out the door that includes the tag transfer or a new tag if you need one. By the way, sometimes that's a scam too. They'll give you the fees, but they'll forget to put that little tag on there because you're responsible for your tag even though they have to go do the work. That's what that dock fee is all about. Everybody knows what a dock fee is. That's because they make the dealer do the tag work. You can't do your own if you buy a car from a dealer. The reason they do that, the state says, because half the people don't show up. They never do it. <laughs> so they, years ago, they said, if you're going to buy a car from a dealership, the dealership is going to do the tag work, and they can charge a dock fee. It's a labor fee. It's a scam. We charge a dock <laughs> fee. Everybody charges a dock fee. State of Florida says if you charge a dock fee, you got to charge everybody a dock fee. Just the, that's just the way it goes. Ours is one of the lowest ones in town. But it doesn't matter what the dock fees are. I don't care if somebody charges a $1,000 dock fee or a $1,000 turbo tax fee. I don't, I don't really care. If their price is better after all the fees in ours, and they win, no matter what the fees are, or vice versa. But if they won't give you a price in writing, and I'm not talking about on a business card, folks. I'm talking about a worksheet. When you come in, you look at one of our cars, take it for a test drive. We're going to let you know, and the next question you're going to have is, can you do any better? The salesman goes to the manager and says, hey, this customer wants to know, can we do any better? And we look at all the comps, because we don't want to embarrass ourselves. Most people are going to go shop. Then we'll go down the road. They want to go... Think about it. They want to test drive other cars or they just want to do comps on the same thing we're doing. So what we do is we do the comps for you. A lot of our customers actually buy the first time in because we make them feel comfortable that they're getting a good price right off the bat. Now, how do we do that? By telling them, hey, this this customer's got this. I mean, this dealership says this. I saw the Chuck Stevens commercial the other day. This is kind of, got kind of guts. I got to say that Chuck Stevens guy, he's got guts. Because he had on, this is our car. Here's Sandy Sanson got this price, and Alan Turner's got this price, and they got this price, and here's Chuck Stevens' price. Pretty gutsy. I try not to mention other dealers. And normally when I do, it's in a good light, not a negative light. I don't want them calling me and badgering me or coming and uh, deflating all my tires on my car if I say something bad about them. And we always, when we, I kind of joke about it because I do talk about the competition. I talk about what dealers do. I don't mention which dealers do it. I'm trying to get dealers to do things the right way. We've been trying to do that at Frontier Motors for 20 years. I think we've been doing a pretty good job because we're the number one independent dealership in the area. Actually, in the whole state, we're very close to being number one. And the reason is because people come back and buy cars from us because they like the process. I get so many compliments for customers come in afterwards and they say, you know, I, this is the best car buying experience I ever had. And I don't think we even do that much things different than when we started 20 years ago. We're really nice to you when you come in. Don's bought a bunch of vehicles from us. Right uh, going on number seven. That's a, that's a lot of cars. Oh, yeah. And Don comes in, and we make it really easy for him. He, sometimes he doesn't know what he wants, but when he does figure out what he wants, he knows that we're going to give him a fair price. Now, the reason I say that is because I don't want to get embarrassed in case Don does shop around. I've got my price driver so that when I give him a price, he can't call me up two days later. Hey, Ivan, Sandy Stansing has that car, and it's $1,000 cheaper. It's mm -hmm. the same darn car. So I already see what they have so that if he does shop around, that I'm going to still win. Or if there is one out there that's less expensive, I've had this happen already on a Cadillac, and there was a car at one of the dealerships. We were selling a Cadillac and one of the dealerships mobile had the twin to it. The customer said, it's a twin. It's $4,000 less. And I said, impossible. Mm -hmm. We were selling this car at a minor profit. We were making money, but I mean, it was like 
we had it for a while. It was like 800 bucks. It wasn't a big deal. Right. So I knew we had a good price on the car. So I found out, and the, and the salesman was stupid by not asking the customer, where was that car at? Now I got to look through every dealership mobile. Guess what? I found the car. And guess what? Airbags deployed, two accidents, had to be towed. And this was a, a very new car. This was like a $40,000 car. And that's why they were selling it so cheap, the, uh, the machines that work on that particular truck. So I think that uh, that's a great uh, uh, thing that uh, World Ford did a brand new bad shot. And by the way, we've got a new Audi dealership coming. To, I don't even know what the name of it is, but over there on, uh, uh, on 29, we've got an Audi dealership coming to town, which I'm so happy about. I love Audis. I've got this little book right here. <clears throat> From Consumers Reports that says that the number one make out there right now, number one, this is in uh, Consumers Reports, April edition, page 23, is Audi. Which brands make the best car? Audi number one, Subaru number two, Lexus number three, Porsche number four, BMW number five, Mazda number six. Now, we're not talking about reliability. We're talking about overall score as far as roadability, test drive, safety, and reliability, and owner satisfaction. We've only got a couple of minutes left. And yes, they do have a body shop. Good. Okay. So Sandy saying Sandy about, so that, <laughs> she probably should fix it right in their body shop because that's what she told me. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if they sent it somewhere else. So that's good to know. A couple of dealerships, uh, new car dealerships don't have body shops. So they've sent them over to Cooks or West Florida Paint Body and stuff like that. So again, Frontier Motors, we've got a great Facebook. Uh, if you just uh, go on Facebook and we'll also we've got a YouTube channel, just, uh, just uh, Google YouTube and then type in Frontier Motors. You're going to see this show on, uh, on uh, YouTube in a, probably about four or five days. And we've got other ones that we've done. Every two weeks I do a new show that we talk about. Some of the things we talk about are the same. Some of the things are, are, are new. I do want to mention that <clears throat> we have 400 cars in inventory. So we're not a small dealer. If you're thinking about buying a new car, you come to Frontier Motors to find out if we've got a car on the lot that has very low miles. And folks, I'm going to tell you, low miles, I've got a Silverado on the lot with 50 miles on it. I have an Encore, a Buick, a small utility with 60 miles. Yes, not 6,000, 60 miles. We have a Tacoma with 240 miles on the lot. We have an F-150 with 362 miles. We have a Tesla with 11,000 miles on. This is a $106,000 Tesla. We can sell for $76,000. It has 11,000 miles on. Talk about depreciation. That's a whole nother show. But Ryan's telling me I've only got a minute left. So we want to talk. Uh, we want to let you know how to get a hold of us. Obviously, you can Google Frontier Motors. We're going to be the first one that pops up. 400 cars in inventory. 31 detailed photographs. They all have prices. You can check us out on Facebook. You can check, check us out on YouTube. And you can all check, also check us out at 230 Beverly Parkway. We're only about two blocks outside of Car City. So if you're going to go shop in a Car City, make sure you stop at Frontier Motors and check out one of those 400 cars. And who knows, maybe we'll just give you that free advice we've been talking about. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. Have a great day. Auf Wiedersehen. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay, come in today. Doing business the old fashioned way. Frontier, we've got the right price. Frontier, we'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead. Frontier.